indeed Jesus Christ is the king of all kings is the king above all kings hallelujah 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 happy resurrection service every morning hallelujah 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 aren't you glad he's not in the grave come on tell somebody my king my God is not in the grave hallelujah he is risen hallelujah hallelujah father we thank you king of glory we worship you Jesus the lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of this house was laid you that planned it you went to the cross you laid down your life nobody took it from you you laid it down and you picked it up again after everyone was satisfied that our debts had been paid our past present and future debts jesus we thank you thank you for the work of resurrection thank you lord that on a glorious day hallelujah <laughs> death could not hold you down the devil could not keep you in the grave you rose and you picked up your life again. And you resurrected on our behalf. And you led captivity captive. You brought saints before the Father. And you presented yourself as a lamb that was slain for us. And the Father accepted your sacrifice. Oh Jesus, we thank you this morning. We are so grateful. For without you, we are not. We are only because you are. And so we bless you, God. We adore you. We magnify you and we glorify you. We celebrate you today, oh God. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. Come on, rise up and give him a hand of applause. Come on, rise up, rise up, rise up and give Jesus a hand of applause right now. Come on, give the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the Great I Am that I Am, the Mighty Lion of the Tribe of Judah, the one that was, that is, and forevermore will be. The one that took your place, took my place. The one that paid our price. Give him a round of applause. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, you may be seated in his presence. Once again, I want to welcome you all into the presence of the Lord today. Online, in-house, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I don't have a message for you. I don't have a preaching for you this morning. I just have a story to tell. I just have a story to tell. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor pastor is a storyteller this morning. You better listen to the story. Hallelujah. Once upon a time. Come on, come on. It's a story. It's story time. Once upon a time. Hallelujah. You know, many, 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 many years ago, over 6,000 years ago, over 6,000 years ago, the council in heaven, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they were in a meeting. And you know, and they started deliberating on a lot of things, and issues started coming up. And one of them said, well, let us make a world. Let's create the earth. And they agreed. And so the father said, okay, let there be. And immediately the world sprung forth. And he began to add to it. You know, the land, the sea, the animals. And he, no, no, the animals were not even brought forth yet. And he created all of that. I know then the Holy Spirit was brooding over it as the father was speaking. And Jesus' power was causing everything to come to pass. And after that creation was done. There was another council in heaven. And they met again. The three persons of the Godhead. God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. And they said, well, now that we have this world. And we actually have a beautiful garden. That we have created. He said, let us make man in our own image. And the Son said, yes, Father. That is a beautiful idea. And the Holy Spirit said, with everything within me, I support this. Let's go for it. 
And so they went forth. And so the Holy Spirit went down. The Father stayed up. And the Holy Spirit began to mold. He began to mold. He began to mold. And then he molded the perfect image of God. You know, most painters will sit and will look at something to create. The Holy Spirit looked at nothing and created something. Because all he could see was the express image of the Father. And so as he was molding, he was molding the image of the Father. And when he was done molding, he looked at it and was like, wow, this is good. And the father said, now you have molded. It is my turn. And the Bible said, and the father came and he put breath in man. He put his breath in us. And immediately man rose and became a living soul. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And he became a living soul. And the man that God made was happy. He started going about, you know, the garden. He started walking around. He was enjoying it. And God the Father looked down. And the three persons of the Godhead looked down one day. And they said, hmm, this man is not fully fulfilled yet. Something is missing in this man. And so the Father said, okay, let's create and help her. And so they started making animals. And they started bringing them to man. And the man would look at an animal that God brings I say, well, that's a lion. And the father says, so be it. And the lion will pass. You know, the goat came, the sheep came, the elephant came, the dinosaurs, if they ever existed, came. And all the animals came, and Adam named them. And after he was done naming them, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit looked at each other. They said, this man has not called any of these animals helper. Because that was what, what, what was missing. And so the father said, okay, let us create for him the perfect help. And so the father put man to sleep. And when man went to sleep, the father came. You know, the first surgery that was ever performed was done in the Garden of Eden. Without any surgical implement. Hallelujah. Ain't God good? He reached into the ribs of man and he pulled out one rib. And all the others closed up by itself. Without sowing, without any shedding of blood. Come on. God is the greatest surgeon. And he took that rib. You know, man was formed from the earth. The woman was formed from the rib of man. You know, I, I started to think about how God did it. I imagine God holding the rib in his hands. And, you know, from the rib, he began to expand the rib. You know, the rib kept growing and growing. He formed the face, formed the body, formed the legs, formed everything, looked exactly like man. Well, like, yeah, this is beautiful. Now let's make her different. And God made her a womb man. A man with a womb. And God said, yes, let's make her different. The big-breasted one. The one with the attribute of a mother. And God made that man, woman. And when he was, while God was doing that, man was put under anesthesia. The man slept. Hallelujah. Wow. God is a surgeon. I, I just keep thinking about it. And so the man slept. And so when the woman was fully formed and awake, I don't know who woke up who. But when that man woke up and looked and saw the woman, his head spun around. He looked and he said, wow, she is gorgeous. She is beautiful. Oh, this is a womb man. Behold the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman. Hallelujah. You know, and she named the woman woman. And the two of them started dwelling in the Garden of Eden. They were doing all they needed to do there. You know, and they did everything right for some time. They did everything right for some time. Bible says, in the cool of the evening, God will come down and take a stroll with them. You know, right from the Garden of Eden, God allowed man to make his own decision. But God will tell just one thing. From man. And he said, everything here belongs to you. 
but of this tree do not eat. He says, for the day you eat, you will die. You know, we'll still get there. And so he left man in the garden. The man did everything well, you know, he and his wife. And after some time, guess what? The woman got bored with monotony. The man was supposed to take the woman along every time they go to work, they do everything. But it came to a time when the man will leave the woman alone. And so when she was left alone, the devil came in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, don't leave your wife alone. Don't you leave each other alone. Don't give room for the devil. Hallelujah. And so the devil came in. And he said, woman. He said, God has given you everything. The woman said, yes. He said, but God told you not to eat of this street. The woman said, yes. He said, God lied. Can you imagine the father of lies calling somebody else a liar? He said, God lied. He said, if you eat it, you will surely not die. <laughs> May we not believe the lie of the enemy. And so the woman believed. And she took off the tree and she ate it. And once she ate it, her eyes opened. Then, right, you know, normally what God has joined together, let no bad fruit put asunder. Hello? <laughs> let no bad fruit put asunder. The woman took the fruit and said, and went to the man. Say, hey, Adam, how are you doing today? How was work today? Good. He said, do you know what food I prepared for you today? He said, see the beautiful fruit. And the man looked and said, I recognize that. That is what God said we should not eat. And the man said, no, I ate it. It was sweet. It was delicious. It was delicious. You know, and you know, with cajoling and everything, the, woman, the man succumbed. And he took a bite from the same fruit. And as soon as he did, guess what happened? His eyes opened. One thing I want to say there and there. Both of them died as the Lord had said. The relationship between them and God was severed instantly. From that day on, God no longer came to walk with them in the garden. That was the death God was warning them about. God no longer revealed himself to them. I know consequently, you know, in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, we see that, you know, and then in Genesis 3, from 22 to 24, God now began to judge. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And do you know why? Because the, dev the man received that from the devil. Our eyes became completely open unto evil. Up till now, guess what? It is more difficult to do good than to do evil. It is so easy to do evil than to do good. Is that not so? Because we received, we partook of that tree. You might say, well, I was not there. If I was not there, I would not have partaken. Let me tell you something. If you were there, you would have eaten the whole tree. Not just one fruit. If you were there, you would have eaten the whole tree. Not one. After you take a bite and your eyes open, guess what? Lord, what, ah, what will happen if I eat more? And you start eating. And because we are men, guess what? When you eat the whole tree, you will uproot the tree so that nobody else can eat. Is that not what we'll do? And so they did that. And God separated himself from them. At that point, you see, I'm telling a story. I'm going somewhere this morning. I want us to understand where resurrection came from. I want us to understand why we need this resurrection. I want us to understand why we need salvation. And so, after they had done that, God drove them out of the garden. They never walked for the garden. Everything was planted, was done. All they had to do was for man to walk about, pick a little bit of shrubs. And remove them. Nothing tedious. 
That was all he was doing morning till night. And he was enjoying the best of God. But after that mistake, guess what happened? Man's relationship was severed from the Lord. And instantly, God knew he had to judge the devil. Listen to me. God being a righteous, God knew if he judges the devil, he also needed to judge man. He cannot judge one without the other. That's why the Bible says, until our own obedience is complete, God cannot judge the disobedience of others. And so God needed to judge the devil. And God pronounced judgment. You know, in, Matthew, in Genesis chapter 3, from verse 22, it says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Can you imagine? God left the tree of life with them. Man never sought to eat out of the tree of life. But the forbidden uh, tree that would give wisdom to evil, that was the one man chose to eat from. You know, like I said, if some of us were in that garden, as soon as we eat, that evil fruit, we will eat the fruit of life. We will finish all the trees in the garden. That's who we are. And so God said, man has become like one of us. But because he will be inclined towards evil forever, he said, let us put a stop to it. Verse 23 says, and therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. You know, in order to fully understand the extent of what happened in the garden, the sin nature was birthed and was embedded in our genes and DNA. The sin nature that Adam created at that point in time was embedded in his genes. Every human being born of a woman automatically inherits that gene of sin. That's why even a baby after some time, a baby knows how to manipulate. A baby suddenly learns that if I cry, mommy will come. And so guess what? Any little thing, the baby will cry. Let mommy just come. Baby is fed, baby is okay, baby is perfect. But the, as soon as the baby learns something, manipulation, it starts to manipulate. You, hello, see, mothers are already talking. The, it is a gene that is inherited from Adam. And it flows through everybody. And as soon as that happened, God realized, actually God knew, that he had to make a way for man to return back to him. So, as soon as Adam sinned, the plan of salvation was put in motion. The plan of salvation was already put in motion. That plan was going to take 4,000 years to manifest. Can you imagine? Because we went through the first Old Testament, the, uh, the Garden of Eden, onto the Old Testament, and then onto the early testament of the Bible. 4,000 years for that plan to manifest. And so God put it in motion. So I'm taking us somewhere this morning. Go with me. You want to say, Pastor, how do you know that the gene of evil was already created in man? Go with me to the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 4. And look at what happened. The Bible says, and Cain, you know, this is the story of Cain and Abel. This, the children of Adam and Eve. Do you understand? Just to show you that the gene of evil, the DNA of evil, was already transferred. So in, Je in Genesis chapter 4 verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Where did he see the first murder committed? Adam never killed any human being. Eve never killed anybody. So where did this child learn to kill? Are you listening to me? The gene was already passed down. 
He could only think of evil, retaliation. And if you look at it, the brother never did anything to him directly. All that happened was somebody came to the Lord. Both of them came to the Lord. One brought the, the fruit of the ground and the other brought an animal. Do you understand? And they sacrificed to God and they worshipped God. And God loved the sacrifice of one more than the other. And so because God loved the sacrifice of one, guess what? Instead of this one taking his anger out against God, took it out against his brother that did nothing to him. Are you seeing the gene of evil? And so God knew that he needed to create a way for us to return unto himself. And so the, the, the work of salvation began. And so we go back to the council in heaven. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit sat and said, Now that man has perpetrated evil, now that man is now inclined only towards evil, how do we bring them back? You know, and they began to deliberate. And I believe somebody suggested in heaven, one of the angels, you know, listening to me, he said, uh, uh, Godhead, he said, there is something you can do. Send them prophets to try and bring them back. You know, send people who are righteous into their midst to try and bring them back. And God said, well, okay, we'll try it out. We'll try, we'll, I, we just want to show you that that way does not work, but we have a sure way that will work. So guess what? They sent prophets. Noah was among the first prophet that was sent. The man came and he said, God is going to destroy the whole earth. You know, he started preaching and they said, drunken old man, drunken old fool. You know, you've been preaching for so long. God is going to destroy the earth. Nothing has happened. You know, and Noah continued to build the ark. And he kept preaching and they did not listen. The prophet was there. They did not listen. And when the time came for destruction to happen, God put Noah in the ark. You know, I just love God. God knew if he allowed Noah to lock the door of the hack. No, I will open the door for some people. The Bible said, and God shut the door of the hack. <laughs> oh God. And God shut the door and took away the key. He said, yes. He said, I will fulfill my word that I've said. And the rain started. The wind came. Water came. The hack got lifted up. And the Bible said, everything upon the face of the earth that was living died except the living things that were kept in the ark. You will think that man will learn from that. So when the ark rested again, and man came back onto the earth, guess what? They began to repeat the same sin. Are you seeing that DNA that will not go? It, the, the thoughts of evil will not go. Even right now, as we are sitting now, some of us are thinking evil. Is that not so? Don't lie. If God were to play the video of what is in your heart right now, hello, how many of you can say, go, show them the video of what is in my heart. Ah, you better don't pray it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And man continued to perpetrate evil. They continued to do like that. And another angel said, Father, let's do this. Let us send them prophets that will release your word and do this and do that. Okay, God said, let us start with Moses. Let's give them laws. Let's help them. Let's help man. So that Moses will go and give them my law. And then if they obey it, if they sin and they kill, they share the blood of an animal, at least it will cover the sin so they can still come into my presence. And so, that was done. And they did that. And you know what? Man being... I don't want to use the inventor of evil. But man knowing how to manipulate everything. After Moses had given them that, they said, okay, so, if I kill somebody now, all I have to do is to sacrifice an animal and it will cover the sin. So, man began to abuse it. The law that was made to protect became what man started taking advantage of. So, men would go ahead and sin. And after they are seen, they'll say, well, all it takes is a total dose. All it takes is a goat. All it takes is a sheep. And they'll bring it before the prophet and say, yeah, I have sinned. I, I have killed so many people. The Bible says, uh, the commandment says I should bring goat. Here is the goat. 
and man did that. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit said, we have a sure way. He said, are you guys satisfied now? They said, Father, send them more prophets. Maybe the more the merrier. Maybe they will listen. And the Father said, okay. And so all the Old Testament prophets came. And they started telling them what to do. Guess what man did? When they don't like a prophet, they kill the prophet. If you don't prophesy to suit them, they kill you. If you tell them lies, they love you. So when all that was done, you know, the Lord Jesus said to the Father, he said, Father, let me wrap it up. Let me wrap it up. Let me do what we already know we're going to do. And so Jesus came like a baby. He was a king from the king of, from the throne of glory. He came to earth like a pauper, like a pauper, a poor person. He was born of the Virgin Mary in a manger. You know, there were hotels. The Bible said there was no inn. There was no place for them. The only place they could go was in the manger. And that's where Jesus was giving birth to. But because he's still king, guess what? God raised magis. God raised people to still come and worship him where he was born. It wasn't about where he was born. It was about the assignment. It was about what he came to do. What he came to do was to restore us back to the Father. And so Jesus came. He began to walk on the face of the earth. He began to show us that living righteous, living holy, living above sin is possible. You know, he began to do all that, perform miracles. He, he started encouraging us that greater things than he has done, we can do. And he kept doing all that. But he kept his goal ahead of him. He knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to resurrect. And he knew we were going to be saved. And so he kept doing that. You know? And so, you know, uh, a summary of what he did in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. says, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Every man. After about 4,000 years, on a glorious Sunday morning, Jesus got on a donkey and he rode into Jerusalem as a king. But while riding him, he knew he was going to die. But his disciples thought that the kingdom was going to be delivered to them at that point in time. And he rode into Jerusalem. Everybody came and they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. The blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And he came into Jerusalem that day. And later on that week, he gathered his disciples into the upper room. They sat down. He instituted the first communion. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. And as, after they were done with that, as they were still eating, he said, one of you that is dipping his hands with me into this food will betray me. And you know, the twelve that sat with him, they started saying, is it I? And Jesus would shake his head, no. Until he got to Judas Iscariot. And Judas also had the audacity to say, is it I? As if the master does not know. Tell your neighbor, God knew you were going to betray him. Hello, tell your neighbor. I told you to tell your neighbor. Ah, God knew you were going to betray him. He knew. So your betrayal is not, is not, is not by surprise. God knew. And so, you know, as he got to Judas' turn, instead of Judas to keep his mouth quiet, I said, next person, please. Judas too wanted to blend with the crowd. He said, is it I? And the master said, yes, it is you. He said, go quickly and do what you need to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Judas rose from that place. And he went. He went to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the elders. And he said, yes, I will be trained to you. But you give me 30, 30 shekels, 30 pieces of silver. And I said, yes. They said, how will you? He said, I will take you to where they are. And the person I kiss is he. Can you imagine? 
Jesus had been in their midst, preaching the gospel for three, one third of a year. And they still could not recognize him. You know, one thing I learned, publicity sometimes is not good for you. Jesus kept himself not recognized for three, one third of a year, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, raising the dead, and they still could not identify him. And so, after the, after the dinner with these people, he told them, said, okay, let's go to get some money and let's go and pray. Friday morning, he said, let's go. And they went, and as he put nine of them afar, moved further down, the closest three, he put them here and he said, guys, you, three of you, you are, you are closer to me. Pray, pray. And he went further to pray. And as he prayed, after an hour of prayer, he came back. He got to the three. And the three people who were his prayer warriors were sleeping. May your prayer warriors not sleep in the day of your battle. They were sleeping. And Jesus woke them and said, Peter, Peter, why? Peter said, the body, the body, the spirit is willing. But the body is weak. Jesus said, pray. And then he now told them, he said, pray that you yourself will not fall into temptation. That, and then he went back and he prayed. And he came back the second time and they were sleeping. The Bible said, he left them alone. And after that, Judas and his people came. And when they came, you know, they, they met the initial nine and they said, where is Jesus? Judas said, he's not, he's not with this nine. He must be in the company of the three. Say, let's go further. And they went further and they saw the three and they were like, where is Jesus? You know, and as soon as Peter saw Judas, remembering that Jesus had said he was the betrayer, Peter took out his sword. You know, the, the, the servant of the chief priest that was closest to Peter, Peter chopped off his hair. And as soon as he did that, Jesus stepped out. He said, Peter, put back your sword. He said, if I need deliverance, it is not from you. He said, I have legions of angels attending to me. He said, shield your sword. Sheet your sword. And he said, what do you want? And Judas stepped forward and kissed him. And Jesus said, is it with a kiss that you betray the son of man? Is it with a kiss that you betray the son of man? And so they came, the soldiers came. They took him, they bound him, and they took him. All the while, they thought they were winning. But before then, Jesus had told Peter, I said, tonight when I am taken, before the cock crows three times, you will deny me. You know, Peter, like me and you, we swore heaven and earth. I will stand by you to the end, pastor. Leave you, it will not happen. Ah, we will die together. You know, and Peter said that we would die together. We would this, we would that. We would. And Jesus said, before the cock crows three times, you would deny me. Jesus, Peter said, never. Okay? So they took Jesus and took him to the company of the elders. Remember, I'm telling you a story. A story time. So I need you to listen and be with me. And so they took him to the company of the elders. And when they got there, guess what? They took him inside. And Peter was outside, you know, and he was warming himself with the light, with the campfire. And one of the servants, a little girl, came and looked at him. Can you imagine? They even recognized Peter more than they recognized Jesus. Somebody knew, he said, you, you were with him. Peter said, mm -mm, I don't even know him. Our paths have never crossed. He said, me and him to fear. Never. I don't know him. Okay, first time. Second time, somebody else came and said, ah, ah, you were with him. You, 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 you are one of his disciples. Peter said, never. I swear, never. Mm? I don't even know him. And then somebody came again. And the little girl, uh, it was another little girl that said, definitely you were with him. Your countenance and everything is like his own. Peter said, no, I don't know. Ah, what's wrong with all you? I said, I don't know him. We have never met. And as soon as he said that, what happened? The cock crew. 
And instantly Peter realized. The Bible said he started weeping. He started crying. You know, because the word was already fulfilled. But you know one thing Jesus told him? When God, Jesus told him that he was going to betray him, Jesus told him, he said, when you betray me and you have been restored, he said, restore the others. He said, restore the others. So, Peter went and Jesus was being judged. You know, Pilate, Herod, all of them, they did that. Remember, a week ago, when he rode into Jerusalem, they were all shouting, Hosanna to the king, Hosanna to the king. Friday morning, before Pilate, when the elders and the chief priests had told them, if any of you says Hosanna or anything other than crucify him, you will not come into the temple anymore. He said, we will banish your entire family from the temple. So they had spread the word. They said, the only thing you can say is crucify him. So, when they were trying to force Pilate to judge Jesus, he, did them, he said, this man is not guilty of anything. But they said, no. They said, okay, it is your custom to release somebody to us, Passover, to celebrate Passover. He said, let us choose who we want. So Pilate said, do you want Jesus of Nazareth or uh, Basabas? Barabbas say, and the people say we would rather choose a murderer a killer a rapist than choose the righteous son of God and so after he had released the, sin, the wicked man to them they said so what do I do with this Jesus and guess what they echoed crucify him crucify him Cruc remember Sunday morning these same people that said, Hosanna. Some took off their clothes. They laid it down for the donkey to pass. You know, some got palms and they were laying it down and said, King of kings. You know, not even up to a week. From Sunday to Friday morning. Can you see how feeble man is? Now they were shouting, crucify him. Crucify him. One thing they did not know was that everything they were doing was already pre-planned by God. They thought they were winning, whereas God was already seated in victory. They thought they were killing a man, but God was restoring billions of souls back unto himself. They never knew. They never knew. And so they crucified him on Friday. The Bible said he laid down his life. The Bible said at evening, at nine in the evening, he shouted, he said, it is finished. It is done. And he laid down his life. That's why Friday is Good Friday. He laid it down. And that was it. And the Bible said when he did that, he went into hell. There are scriptures that talks about it. He went into hell. You know, I like to describe, please listen to this story again. Friday night in hell was party night. Did somebody hear me? It's like party night, you know, like Friday night is party night everywhere. You know, everybody is around 12 midnight, 10 a.m., 10 midnight, 10 p.m. That people start getting dressed, party time, you know. You know, people who didn't dress properly to go to work in the morning, when it is party time in the night, come on, man. You know, they suit up like me. They freshen up with the perfume. Mm, party, party time. And so the, the devil and his angels, it was party time in hell. It was party time. I tell you something. All the demons left wherever they were on earth. Everybody came to hell. If, I, if anything, I can say boldly. That was one day that there was no demon on earth. Those three days, there were no demons on earth. Guess what? Because to them, they had the king of kings. They had a lord of lords. They had God himself in hell. And so they were like, they were not bothered with anybody else on earth. And so they all came into hell. You know, and the devil was administering his punishment to Jesus. And Jesus was there taking it. Not talking. 
Remember, he laid down his life. They did not take it from him. He laid it down. And they punished him. They did a lot of things. They humiliated him. When heaven was satisfied Sunday morning. Come on, somebody say Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Someone shouted out Sunday morning. Sunday morning. When heaven was satisfied. Hmm, the blast of the Holy Spirit. The breath of God. Blasted his way into hell. No demon could stop him. No principality could prevent him. No power could stand in his way. No devil could stop him. And he came into hell. And he stood by the side of Jesus. And he said, God, it is done. He shouted to him, God, it is done. And at that point in time, Guess what? Jesus rose up. Hallelujah! Woo! Glory! Glory! And Jesus, you know, from that place, he rose up. And as he rose up, the Bible said, listen to me, listen, listen. He said to the devil, he said, give it back. Give it back. Give it back. Right now, give it back. Give it back. Babu said he took the keys of death and hell. Every key that the devil has stolen from man, Jesus restored it. He took it back. He took it back. And he took it. He said, it's not done yet. He said, now, you came to watch a show, you will see a show. Hallelujah. For he said, for three days you thought you were winning. He said, I'm going to win in one second. Not three days. And the Bible said, he made an open show. He was, he was not, listen, the, the enemy had him in hell. God made an open show. God turned hell into a flat screen. God turned hell into a flat screen. That was seen all over. And Jesus defeated the devil and all his courts. And he took the keys. And the Bible said, as he stepped out of that place, listen, he did not go alone. The Bible said he led. He led uh, captivity captive. Everyone, every saint that the devil has, had held captive, as soon as Jesus rose and was living, instantly hell let them go and every one of them walked out with jesus hallelujah they walked out with him out of hell everyone stuck in abraham's bosom he let them out and the devil could do nothing because god had shown ultimate victory the victory that god planned that the devil had no idea of. But the devil walked for that victory. Thinking he was walking against that victory. Your life is pre-planned. Hello, somebody listen. Your life is victorious. Right now you are going through. And the devil thinks he is winning. No, 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 no. He's not winning. God has set you up for the ultimate resurrection. The resurrection that the devil cannot stop. God has set you up for that. And that's where he was taking, he's taking you. And so Jesus rose. He rose. And he led captivity captive. And the Bible said they walked through, in, through the streets of Jerusalem that day. Men saw people who had died. Men saw a lot ghosts. They felt ghosts. People who had died. And they saw a lot of them. And they were wondering. And Jesus came unto his people. They wanted, he said, no, don't touch me. He said, he's still fresh. He's still fresh. Somebody say, he's still fresh. He's still fresh. He said, it's got to go to the Father first. It's got to go to the Father first. Before anything. And the Bible said he dwelt with them without letting them touch him for some time. For the time he was with them. And then he arose, he went to the Father. And I'm telling you a story. 
when he got before the father he said father that which we planned i have done hallelujah, hallelujah. somebody say hallelujah he said that which we planned i have done it is finished he said see the devil poked me see i was smitten with a spear my blood was shed the devil had me for days he said i have paid the price come on somebody shout my price is paid hallelujah and god the father embraced the son and the holy spirit joined in the embrace and they said it is finished now we have man back unto ourselves we have man back unto ourselves we have man back unto ourselves that is what easter is all about it is not about the eating and the drinking it is about the fact that god pre-planned that we will come back unto him and the way of coming back unto him was for jesus god himself to go to the cross listen he has taken away your sins i don't know who you are i don't know what sins you feel you have committed as far as heaven is concerned when you say jesus is lord and you repent and you confess that sin that sin is, listen that sin is not covered it is washed away it is washed away before jesus assume that my pocket uh pocket what's this called pocket and catch it assume that this is sin right this is a sin staining my my cloth before jesus what happened was it was covered you can't see it but it's there no one could see it but it's there before jesus he was there when jesus came died resurrected and is seated at the hand right hand of the father guess what when i confess and repent of that sin it is not covered it is removed completely hallelujah it is removed completely that is salvation my people that is what jesus has done for you that is what he has done and that's why as we celebrate him today having heard that story if you are not born again you are missing out if you are born again and you have missed it you are missing out it is time to rededicate your life back to jesus it is time to come back home it is time to come back home bow your heads with me everybody close your eyes everybody online in house close your eyes and bow your head you heard that wonderful story every part of that story i took from the word of god you know to explain to us the work of salvation you know having heard that story you want to give your life back to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to him i'm not going to embarrass you and ask you to come out i'm just going to ask you to say a prayer with me this morning you say a prayer and that will begin the journey you know like i said the journey of your life has been pre-planned to end in glory do you understand but the only way it will end in glory is you is if you are in christ so with that say with me this morning you want to rededicate your life or you want to give your life to jesus heavenly father i come to you in the name of jesus i realize i have been a sinner and i have sinned i confess my sins and i repent of them jesus please forgive me my sins come into my life be my lord and my savior i give my life to you today thank you for saving me in jesus mighty name we pray as simple as that prayer is that is all there is to salvation that is all there is if you have said that prayer please communicate with us send us a text send us an email or walk up to me after service and let's talk and the lord will bless you your name that has been written in the lamb's book of life will never be erased in the name of jesus hallelujah just rise up everybody rise up let's bless him for salvation this morning let's bless him for his grace let's bless him for his grace come on come on rise up rise up bless him bless him you are not saved by works of righteousness you are not saved because you are good you are saved because the father loves you you are saved because the father sent jesus to die for your sins 
That's why you're saved. So just bless him. I just want us to take one minute. Today is Easter. Today is resurrection. Bless him and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying for me. Personalize it. Thank you for going to the cross for me. For me. You did it for me, oh God. For me. Because of me. You had me in mind when you went to that cross. You had me in mind when you resurrected. You gave your life just for me, oh God. And I thank you. I thank you that not only did you give your life, you picked it up again. You are not dead, but you are alive. You are well. You are seated in glory. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Thank you, Lord Almighty. I just give you thanks to you, God. I celebrate you, and I remember your resurrection, oh God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, put your hands together and thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we give thanks. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Amen.